Hey, do you guys remember 16? If you're a late 90s to early 2000s kid, then you most likely remember watching this show on Cartoon Network. Well, that's if you're an American. For all my Canadians and Europeans, you probably watched it on Teletoon. And for those of you who don't know, 16 was a Canadian cartoon about a group of 6 teenage friends who all work at the mall. It was an episodic series that lasted from 2004 to 2010, accumulating 4 seasons and 92 episodes. The show was created by Jennifer Persh and Tom McGillis, who also happen to be the producers and creators of Total Drama Island as well as Stoked, two Canadian cartoons that were massive stateside. In the show's press release, the creators stated that they recognized kids were watching sitcoms like Friends and weren't surprised that kids appreciated good writing. They wanted to make a show for kids with a classic sitcom writing style, fast-paced dialogue, and multiple plot lines. So, on November 7th, 2004, 16 would premiere in Canada with the pilot episode, Take This Job and Squeeze It. This was a great debut that introduced viewers to the world of 16 and its main cast, showing their personalities, intricacies, and flaws while setting a basis for the episodic nature of what's to come. The episode opens with Caitlin and her soon-to-be ex-best friend getting ready for a shopping spree. We then cut to the rest of the main cast all meeting up at the Big Squeeze, which would be the main hangout spot for the show. Jen is currently working her last day at the Big Squeeze and is talking to Nikki, Jonesy, and Wyatt about how she can't wait to start working at the penalty box. It's made evident that they all made a pact to work at the mall that summer so they'd be able to see each other. So, during this scene, they all disclose how their job hunting is going. This scene was all dialogue but wouldn't bore any kid because it was funny and revealing. A great introduction to the characters letting all their intricacies shine through their dialogue. Throughout this interaction, we learned that Nikki's the sarcastic and edgy friend, Jonesy's the comedic relief that is infatuated with women and lies to get what he wants, White's a music fanatic that can be a bit pretentious, and Jude is the typical stoner type that's always depicted in cartoons. We then cut to Kaylin who, unfortunately, after a few purchases, her card gets declined and she receives a call from her dad telling her she needs to get a job. After a montage of the cast all in interviews, none except for Jen get hired. They meet up at the big squeeze before another round of interviews. At the same time, Caitlin is a table over and is sulking at the fact that no one wants to hire her. Jen would end up consoling her and reluctantly gives her the job at the big squeeze. The guys all set out for their next round of interviews and Jonesy, being Jonesy, tell them to forget about what Jen said and just lie their way to get a job. They all end up getting hired, with Jude even being a manager. Kaylin's first day on the job isn't her best, and she starts to think this just isn't for her. Her insecurities would be amplified when her best friend from the first scene catches her working and decides to cut all ties with her. With Kaylin feeling alone and isolated, the crew decide to befriend her, and that's the end of the pilot. There were many great episodes throughout the series. A Lime Party and The New Guy are a few, with my personal favorite being Night of the Living Dude, a play on the Night of the Living Dead. There's something in there! Damn. Missing one of us? When the mall is dead. Do you get the feeling something weird is going on here? What is happening to our mall? 16, Dude of the Living Dead. Next, only on Cartoon Network. I was gonna ask her out, and now she's dead. And that's one of the main reasons why I like the show so much. It's littered with pop culture references, Star Wars, The Fast and the Furious, Friday the 13th, along with many more cultural shows are frequently referenced. One thing that caught my eye on my latest viewing of the show was just how surprisingly diverse the cast was in ethnicity as well as personality. Jennifer Persh and Tom McGillis stated that they wanted to make the show's location based on the Toronto Eaton Center. And with Toronto being the most diverse city in the world, it certainly makes sense that the characters on 16 are just as diverse. What's great about their depiction is that the characters' ethnicities aren't ever really brought up or made into a plotline, so it never feels forced. I will say the show can sometimes try too hard to be edgy. With 16 being geared towards preteens and teens, there were many jokes, like the one I played in the intro, that were a bit too risque, causing the show to be heavily censored. A quarter of the episodes would be removed in the US, having to do with various reasons, from nudity to homosexual innuendos. She'll give you signs. What kind of signs? Well, it's all about body language. She'll probably lean in towards you, maybe even touch you. Then she'll part her lips slightly and close her eyes. And that's when you go in for the kill. Ah! Dude, what are you kissing me for? 
I thought I was reading the signs, man. So you know when to kiss the chick, dude? Yuck. Ugh. Well, this is weird. So Never happened. I have fond memories of watching this show as a kid, and I'm sure some of you would say the same thing. In the comments below, tell me how you feel about 16 and what was your personal favorite episode. If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks and see you next time.